Back on topic, we keep going back to the beers. Wes Stroud, Survivor Man, source material. Production companies pick it up, spin it off into television shows. Starry-eyed little boys pick it up, turn it into YouTube channels. Here we are. The genre has moved beyond that. Now it's about bigger, better, and better. Somebody has got to take the bushcraft genre on YouTube and evolve it. Anybody that has a YouTube channel and has put out any amount of content knows that the chances are pretty good. Uh, you're going to throw away 90% of your content. So here comes Huntsman. Because the very first thing that I did on YouTube, my very first episode, I beat Joe Robinette's ass into the ground for an hour and a half. That's That was my debut on YouTube. Was to take the biggest guy in the yard and beat him around like a white trash bitch for an hour and a half. Now, since Survivor Man and Naked and Afraid and Dual Survival, Dave Canterbury, Cody Lundeen, all these boys on television, even Little Joey, we have to give Little Joey his props, he was on TV, his claim to fame as I was on alone for like 17 hours. Started a cultural phenomenon that inspired Millions of people to go back out into the woods and pretend that they're professional survivalists too. And that's all they're doing is pretending because they're going to the safe space that is their camp where nothing bad ever happens to them. And they're presenting content on YouTube where nothing bad ever happens to them. Ah, so, uh, we get you get a YouTube channel. We already went back through the history. Hey, there we go, a Huntsman salute. You get a YouTube channel up and running, and you put out this same cookie cutter content, uh, copying the same formula that a million other people have put out there, and then you wonder why your channel doesn't go nowhere. There's a difference. There's a difference between a, being a successful woodsman and being a successful YouTuber. You're not going to be able to do both. Because if you want to be a successful woodsman on YouTube, you have to lie to everybody who watches you. Now, we took the live stream idea. Now, just like Les Stroud before me, every outdoors channel out there is live streaming every fucking chance they get. Mobile streaming is a thing. A cultural phenomenon. If you are not live streaming in the outdoors genre, you are falling behind the times. And three years ago, we were live streaming from the woods. The first ever live stream hangout from a remote location within the genre. So I spanked Joe Robinette's ass for an hour and a half on my debut episode. And then I bring live streaming into the genre. And then we took that one step further and said we're going to build the cottage, the entire cottage, every step, stone by stone, mud pack by mud pack, entirely live. So there was no 20 minute video coming out on YouTube about how to build a survival shelter. Now there was an entire year of three or four hours, sometimes five, six, seven, eight hour videos coming out that were entirely live. No editing, no cutting, no movie magic. What you see is what you get. We did that right here on this channel. This is where it started. Other people come along. I have yet to see another channel go out there and try to do a lot the live bushcraft build series. Try to replicate that. 586 Woodcraft. I have yet to see anybody go out there and build something as large as the cottage that we have on my channel entirely live. Nope. They're going out there, uh, they're and they're editing out all the shit that happens to them. So, here's the thing. Here's the problem with that. With every channel out there. If you go out to the woods, do you mind? Thank you very much. If you go out to the woods, 
and you build yourself a survival shelter and you throw it up on YouTube as an edited video that's about 30 minutes long, even an hour long. We started pushing out hour long content and then everybody else started doing that too. And we'll prove that here in a minute. <coughs> if you go out to the woods and you film a YouTube video or you create a, a mini series on your channel of building a survival shelter and you don't do it live, you cut out all of your mistakes, you cut out all of the times that that thing fell down on you or all the times you fucked up, you're not presenting your audience with realistic expectations whenever they go out there and try to copy you. And they will try to copy you. That's what you want them to do. You're trying to inspire people. Even an asshole like me is trying to inspire people. Even playing the bad guy. And I'm the only bad guy in the outdoor genre. I'm the only one who came into the genre saying, I don't want to be a pretty boy that gets along with everybody. I do not want to be your friend. I do not want to be your hero. I do not want to be a role model. I do not want to be successful on YouTube. I want to present realistic content and never fake being me. So, what you see is what you get. On the Live Bushcraft Build Series, what you see is what you get. We struggled with that build. It fucking sucked. It hurt. We got cut. We got cold muscles. The thing fell down on us. Uh, the weather was shit at times. But every single time, no matter what we came up against throughout that series, everybody fucking loved it. I could hold the audience's attention for five, six, seven, eight hours and not lose a soul. That was, that was awesome. That is a greater success than any accolade that anybody else can claim as analytic-wise on YouTube. If you can hold one person's attention for eight hours and you keep them energized and entertained the entire time, then you've fucking done something. If you lose them the first 30 seconds of your edited video, or they're just skipping through your edited video, you ain't done shit. So we come along three years ago, and I said, I'm going to create a channel that is the exact opposite of the formula. I'm going to watch everybody. I'm going to watch Joe Robinette. I'm going to watch TA Outdoors. I'm going to watch Survival Lily for months. And I did. For months, I watched every major bushcrafting outdoors channel on YouTube before I uh, settled on what I was going to do. And I seen all of their content. And I wrote down what they did do. And I wrote down everything that was missing. So I had two pa two pieces of paper. I sent, wrote down everything that everybody does. I wrote down everything that I knew happened that they cut out of the videos. I took the list of what everybody does. And I threw that son of a bitch away. I kept the list of what nobody does. And I built the, the origins of my channel on that list. So... From a creator's perspective, from a content creator's perspective, I did not want to be everybody else. I don't want to be Joe Robinette. I don't want to be Survival Lily. I don't want to be Les Stroud. I don't even want to be successful on YouTube. You see that? You see people doing that? The noobs? Oh. I want to get to 3,000 subscribers. I'll I want to get to X amount of subscribers. Oh, I wish my channel was doing better. Oh, I wish uh, I was getting more views. Oh, I wish somebody would thumbs up my video. Oh, I wish somebody would share out my video. They want success on YouTube, not success as a survivalist. The entire bushcraft survival genre on YouTube sprang forth from that. So here's how it started. Les Stroud come up with Survivor Man he took a handheld camera out to the woods he filmed every fucking thing that happened to him the good, the bad, the ugly and he created Survivor Man they put Survivor Man on television which renewed a sense of survival culture around the globe and it kicked off this cultural phenomenon where everybody and his brother wanted to go out and copy Les Stroud and the Survivor Man formula. It all started with Les Stroud. 
everything that you do today, if you have an outdoors channel, started with Les Stroud. You owe that motherfucker your thanks and allegiance. If it wasn't for Les Stroud creating Survivor Man, this genre would not have become a cultural phenomenon. He can annoy the shit out of you all, all, you, all he wants. He was the first guy to do it. And nobody can change that. Whether you like him, love him, or hate him, he was the first guy to do it. Television producers see the success of Survivor Man. They go out there and they put their own spin on the formula. And then all of a sudden, you have these bullshit, watered-down, produced shows like Alone and Dual Survival and all these other goddamn shows. Naked and Afraid. They just keep whoring out Les's original idea and putting all these goddamn nerdy-ass pansies on television that they can manipulate and control and fuck in the ass all they want. Les Stroud went out there with a handheld camera and made it real. Production companies got their hands on it and made it a production. So if you want to see the original version of Outdoors content, you watch Survivor Man. If you want to see the Hollywood produced version of Outdoors content, you watch that pansy ass wannabe show Alone. Alone is a fake ass stage production, which is why those guys have to sign the contracts that they sign and can't talk about how that show is produced. They are not alone. They are not alone for more than 24 hours at a fucking time. The title itself is misleading. They have human contact throughout, contact throughout filming that fucking series. And almost everything that they film gets thrown in the trash can because the production company, do, company doesn't think it's dramatic enough. Alone is a bullshit show that brainwashes people into thinking outdoor survival is one way when it's not. This was brought up by Tom Ritter on a live stream earlier today. I don't watch TV either. Me and Mike's in agreement with that. TV ain't nothing but fake shit. Reality TV is as far from reality as you're ever going to get. And I don't give a fuck if a participant, participant or a fucking winner from Alone comes to the Huntsman channel and says, Steve, I was there. It's all real. It's... Fuck you, you're a lying son of a bitch. The only reason you're saying that is because the contract told you to.